I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Hi. Hi. Interested, and also getting out about WPE and perhaps having maybe one or two of us come on on our show. So that would be great. Glendora. What do you call a miniature guppy? <laughs> <laughs> you give up? Yes. A microfiche. <laughs> well, we are at the long uh, You're girls. speaking to a librarian. That would really <laughs> This is a collaboration <laughs> between uh, that's good. Uh, that, that sounds good to me. <laughs> Middle Country Public <laughs> Library <laughs> Foundation and Center Reach and the uh, Long Island Fund for Women and Girls. Oh, that's good. So we are doing what we call oh, that's Women's good. Product yeah. Expo. Oh, your show, show for uh, Nassau and signs. Suffolk County. Women's Product Expo. Right. That's nice. We will be featuring women across Long Island. What who have make things, create things. Yeah, yeah, this is good. And when is four it? of them are actually here today so with some of their products. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. October 11th. That would have been good to put on this. October 11th. Yes. October 12th. I'm sorry. And it's where? Where is it? Where is it? It's at the Middle Country Library in Center Reach. Center Reach. Yes. Yeah. You know, we're have, there's a meeting in North Hampstead tonight. It's about cable television, public access. Can you guys go and speak? I am. I'm going to go and speak. Public access is a great institution. Yes, yes, it is. It's a great institution. Oh, now we got another one. Let's see women. Let's see women's. Uh, this is the Fleet. Fleet is our expo sponsor. They're our main sponsor. Oh, okay. And they have a new whole business enterprise. Oh boy! So isn't that a nice sign? It's nice, isn't it? And yeah. Yes. Uh, yep. Yeah. And Laura so there is from Fleet. Laura she's the you representative. She's the head of it. Oh, you're from the bank. Yes, I am. Oh, Thank good. You. I'll have to go visit my money. <laughs> good. I'm glad you're a customer. <laughs> good. Thanks, thanks, uh, Glendora. We yeah. go in and get this out. I'll go so in. And get, this is their live television go? show. No, yes. it's a tape. It's going to yes. be tape, but it's yes. live on tape. Right. Mm. I think this is terrific what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What we thinking? I have a joke to tell you. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Do you have your group together? This, uh, where are we going to? Oh, okay, that okay. one. You this did get that. Okay. Oh, that's great. Here's okay. the other one. another one. And this is how they go in, though, and I never knew it. Okay. I have a joke to tell you. Oh, good. Yeah. Let me get everybody's attention. I have a joke to tell you. Okay. Adam is talking to God, and he says, God, why did you make Eve? And God says, I thought you were lonesome. And then Adam says, well, God, why did you make her so beautiful? And God says, so you would like her. And then Adam says, well, God, why did you make her so dumb? And God said, so she would like you. <laughs> About the, the Russian lady who had a wooden baby? No. She married a Pole. <laughs> <laughs> Polish, I could say it. <laughs> That's my lunch, and I can't eat. The power of TV to attract. Every parking space is taken. It's because of the TV show. Time is 2 o'clock. Franklin and I are going to Woodbury and make our demand to see the shareholders list, which is the law. Now, let me read you the law. This is the New York State Business Corporation law. holding or thereunto, authorized in writing by the holders of at least 5% of any class of the outstanding shares, upon at least five days written demand, may require such foreign corporation to produce a record of the shareholders, setting forth the names and addresses of all shareholders, the number and class of shares 
held by each and the dates when they respectively became the owners of record thereof and shall have the right to examine in person or by agent. Did you hear that, Franklin? Is that the law? In person or by agent? Or attorney at the office of the foreign corporation in this state or at the office of the transfer agent or registrar in the state. We must ask them, who is the transfer agent? We'll go to that office. Or registrar in this state or at such other place in the county in this state in which the foreign corporation is doing business as may be designated by the foreign corporation during the usual business hours the record of shareholders or an exact copy thereof certified as correct by the corporate officer or agent responsible for keeping or producing each record and to make extracts therefrom. Did you hear that Franklin? Is that the law? No. To make extracts therefrom? No. Resident holders of voting trust certificates representing shares of the foreign corporation shall for the purpose of this section be regarded as shareholders. So that is the law and Charles Former and Virginia Salhouse have violated that law. Upon refusal by the foreign corporation, in this case Cablevision Systems Corporation, or by an officer or agent of the foreign corporation to produce the for examination or to permit an examination of the record of shareholders as herein provided, the person making the demand for production and examination may apply to the Supreme Court in the judicial district where the office of the foreign corporation within the state is located. Upon such notice as the court may direct for an order directing the foreign corporation, its officer or agent, to show cause why an order should not be granted directing such production and permitting such examination by the applicant. Upon the return date of the order to show cause, the court shall hear the parties summarily by affidavit or otherwise, and if it appears that the applicant is qualified and entitled to such examination, the court shall grant an order compelling such production for examination and awarding such further relief as to this court may seem just and proper, and that to me is $23 million. It stood right behind you while you were making one of your things, I guess. Making the program? Yeah. Editing? Yeah. And what happened? And you were attending strictly to what you were doing. Six minutes. Wow. And what was I doing? Well, you were there was no on the screen it was uh, one of the programs I guess it was uh, and you were you had your cards in your hand. Putting up graphics? Yes. Yeah. And watching the audio levels? Right. Yes, once you got up out of your chair and came over to the right, the things that were being made, I guess. Yes, the archive and the copy for cable TV. Yes. Yes, it was the... Uh, 13th edition, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th.
from uh, we got there at 9:30, started at 9:45, and done at 1:30. And what did you say? I concentrate on what I'm doing. Franklin came to see if I had anything to mail out. That was very nice of you, Franklin. Thank you. I have 11 specials to assign. There were 17 programs this week. Jim Burness uh, tested my camera. He tried it out. He was very impressed with it. And he's thinking of getting one. This is a Canon camera. ES. 199 or something. 190. ES 190. It's probably they don't make it anymore. <laughs> I bought it the first of this year. But he took a picture in the dark with it. He took a picture uh, of red and saw it on the monitor and said the color is true. And the uh, audio was so good, picked up by the microphone really impressed with it and the remote Good. here we are at the airplane factory you want me to let you... I just pressed the red button have you got the uh... Okay. Yes, I'm going to Cablevision to make my demand again to see the shareholders' records. And this is my copy machine. Mm -hmm. My handheld copy machine. Okay. Stay tuned. Cablevision Woodbury. We're here to see the public file. And this is where Charles Dolan used to cheat us and not show us the books, records. In we are now leaving Woodbury. Uh, Amy Van Horn took six specials. Thank you for that, Amy. Uh, we did a lot of work on the public file. We got a lot of information, and we've gone through three of the folders. 111 Media Crossways, and this is finally sales, and I finally made contact with somebody, and he's going to give me the prices and the people if he has them. And Franklin's going to pick it up Tuesday. Another Long Island tie-up. Northern State. What time is it, Frank? Six o'clock. Six p.m. And what exit? Repeat? Glen Cove. Glen Cove. I didn't take pictures of feeding the geese. Isn't that awful? They were so cute. I must have fed them. Four slices of bread and eight cookies. And there was a mallard duck there. And he was beautiful. And the, you can see why the gander is the boss. He is huge. What an amazing bird. I saw Amy Van Horn. And I asked her how many specials could she take. Was how many you have and I started to count and I said six as I was counting upward. She says, I'll take six. She says, I won't get through looking at them until the end, first of next week. Look at that traffic tie-up. And uh, 
Then I asked her if I got the uh, other four labeled and sent to Amy Galimbo. But she sent them over by inter-office mail and they wouldn't let me do that. So we left Woodbury. Now we're heading to Manhasset to the meeting of the town board town of North Hempstead. It's a public hearing on cable TV. What are they doing here? They've cut down all the trees just so they can put money into their pocket. More destruction, not construction. Destruction. This used to be so pretty here. Look at the mess they made of it. You know when we come to Shelter Rock? Franklin! Tell me! train must have just come in. So, here's Town Hall, town of North Hampstead. What is the time now, Frankie? Six. Twenty-three. Thank you. It's a pretty bathroom. Town of North Hampstead. Town Hall. Have I lost any weight? This was the tenth day, folks. The tenth day of fasting until 4 p.m. This is the public hearing on a cable TV franchise. Folks, this is uh, Great Neck, public access. And uh, Rick is going to videotape the hearing. And it's going to be shown on channel 71. That's the channel I'm on, Rick. Yeah, three o'clock, yeah, three o'clock Thursday. And Marcellus is leaving. What? I'm telling my audience that Marcellus is leaving. See, she knows when they're going to air. We need to know when they're going to air. Sorry. <laughs> As to what they're now proposing to offer in the proposed franchise renewal. After we hear from Cablevision, the town special uh, council, Tom Levin, will fill in anything that he 
feels has either been omitted or should be heard. And uh, after we've heard Cablevision's presentation and anything that Mr. Levin wants to say, we'll then have time for questions from the town board and from all of you. Uh, either questions or comments on Cablevision's performance within the terms of the old franchise and of course to offer suggestions for any improvements or additions that would be offered here. Now don't you wish you could get that comfort? Uh, folks, this is uh, Franklin's report on Crooked Cable Vision and Virginia's uh, Victoria Silver. Um, and this happened on the uh, 13th day of September, uh, Tuesday at 10.30 a.m. You got your license. Take your recorder.
or we'll have to scrutinize them. Let me add those. <laughs> uh, I don't know, can you see? She looks terrific, you know, and she eats potato with butter and sour cream.
Uh, all right, stay tuned as to what happened. That's going to be on the next edition. Too bad. I don't have time to finish up. Uh, the report. I went to uh, Cablevision headquarters at Bethpage to make my 50th demand to see the shareholders list. And uh, I have a right to this, and it's by law, and I have a right to uh, send an agent to do it for me, that would be Franklin, and I have a right to uh, make copies. All of these rights have been violated by these blatant lawbreakers, Cablevision Systems Corporation, Charles F. Dolan, James L. Dolan, and Robert S. Lemley, and Charles A. Former, and uh, Victoria D. Salhouse, and uh, Robert Callagy, and Sadly Stevens Burke and Burke. They are all a bunch of gangsters. So I went there uh, yesterday, September the 13th, Wednesday, at 3 p.m. I waited for Salhouse to come down from upstairs, and I faced her eyeball to eyeball, and here's a recording of it, audio recording. She ran away, folks, as fast as she could. She wouldn't answer my question, where is the transfer agent? She wouldn't answer the question, where is the transfer agent? Where else can I see it? Okay, I want to see Mr. Lemley. Sue, I'd like to see Mr. Lemley. This is the 50th time. This is the 50th time. Cablevision has broken this law. Yeah, I'd like to see Mr. Lemley. Yes. And I'd like to talk to him on the phone. I can't understand what they have done so wrong that they're so afraid to show the shareholders of the list. I see 
I have Glendora in the lobby and she wants to see Mr. Lemley. His father died and it was last week. Okay. Mr. Lemley's father died. Oh, I'm so sorry. Who can see me? Oh, that's good. Yes, that's right. I found that out last Friday. So I said, is there anybody else I can speak to? Nobody's available to speak to you. It's on Friday, I found out. It's awful to lose your father. It hurts. It hurts so much. So a woman called back, named Liz, and said, there's nobody else that Glendora can see. Did you ever see such cheats as Cablevision Systems Incorporated, Charles F. Dolan, James L. Dolan, Robert S. Lemley, Charles A. Former, Victoria D. Sellhouse. 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 Turned her back and walked away. What a bunch of cheats. Okay, what time is it? It is 3, 16 P. Hi. made a copy of it and then she signed my copy received. conscience or any morality or any ethics at all, they would quit that bunch of thieves. Gasoline was a dollar and sixty-two cents. Sitcom. 
uh, route to uh, Old Country Road. Thank you. Then we got to uh, Woodbury, and B, the receptionist, was giving out cookies, gourmet cookies. And she offered me one, and I said, no, I can't. It was three minutes to four. I can't okay. eat until four. Thank you so much. No, you're welcome. No problem. I fast. You're until, welcome, Aaron. I fast until 4 p.m. Oh. And ah. I, this is the tenth day, and I've only lost five pounds. Oh. Uh, you know what I start taking? What? I, um, I start taking that uh, metabolite. It's in the mall. My stomach. Yeah, you're terrific. I wish I looked that good. up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I looked that good. Oh, girl. <laughs> get back. I got two minutes. Oh, two minutes. Two minutes. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Where'd you get such nice cookies? Um, I got the bakery right there in, um... Oh, you were nice to come and treat everybody? Oh, yeah. I got gourmet. Hey, baby, I got gourmet cookies. Oh, really? I think it might be deep in the blue one. I'm not sure. Oh, really? Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Miss, would you like those? Franklin could have any. Franklin could have some. He could have as many as he wants. He never gets back. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. You want a cookie, Jeff? She's giving cookies away. No, I'm all right, thank I'll you. I'll give you one of mine. I can't eat until four. There it is. There it is. Four o'clock. Thanks, baby. Jeff Clark came downstairs with a big box. Uh, that's box number one of the public file. And we went into a conference room. And uh, I set up my copying machine when I started looking at the public file. Would you come on and sit next to me? Yeah. Thanks very much. You see the Satani directory? The Satani directory says that. Mr. Danny Directory says that Quinn is still vice president. Yeah, that's, uh... The wind. No, 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 no. That coal fault. And coal fault oh, left... Really? Yeah, and coal fault left in 96. Yeah. 96, about. 93, 94. 94. Okay, really I'm sorry. Yeah, I misspoke. You're right. Yeah, really? Mm -hmm. Well, funny. isn't that what you saw, Franklin? Yeah. So Jack looked at it and said, you have to update that. He belongs to C-Tanny. C-Tanny is Cable Television Association in New York. So we covered the uh, first folder, second folder, third folder, fourth folder. The information is atrociously out of date. It's way up 1989. And we made copies. I brought my own copying machine and we made copies. That's exactly what we should do with shareholders with. Here's a little trusty copy machine that did us so much good uh, with a public file and saved us so much money. And I uh, said to Jeff Clark, uh, North Hampstead is having a town board meeting tonight on cable TV. Are you going? Yes, I am. And he turned out to be, of course, cable vision star there at the meeting. I saw Amy Van Horn uh, and uh, 
I said I had some specials. I just came up from Lindbrook. And uh, I said, I have, uh, I want to know how many you can take. And I said, I have about, let's see, I have started counting them. And I got up as far as six. She says, we can take six. So that was nice. And uh, Diane Bennett uh, would not let Glendora uh, ship the four other specials to Hop Hog through the uh, uh, inner office mail. Came the town board meeting, and I will have to uh, get dressed up, I guess, and report to you on that. So the uh, meeting at the North Hampstead Town Board was all about uh, cable vision, and uh, the renewal of the franchise that cable vision had with uh, North Hempstead. Well, uh, first of all, Rick came there, and uh, Marcellus isn't going to work for uh, Public TV in Great Neck, and Rick has taken his job, and Rick came and set up the camera and videotaped that uh, for Shirley Bruno. Uh, and here is the notice of it, a public hearing. And I question how public it was, because there are re definite uh, constraints on how that should be published. Uh, September 13th at 2000, at 7.30 p.m., a public hearing to consider a franchise agreement between the town of North Hempstead and Cablevision Systems Long Island Corporation. And we got there uh, from uh, Woodbury, and it's a pretty place over there. Uh, you get down uh, 25A, you get off the Northern State, you should be able to go Shelter Rock, but they made such a mess of that place over there with their so-called construction, which translates to destruction. What are they doing? They made such a mess of it. So you have to uh, go all kinds of detours. Uh, and then when you get Sheltowak Road to Route 25A, it's the third traffic light. And uh, that's Plan Dome. And you turn right, and it's about two, three traffic lights. And you come to the town hall. And there was a parking place there, and all the people were coming home from the train. They looked so tired. Uh, and so. I cleaned up the uh, 1993 link and organized all the things that we carry in it and went to the rubbish can and went into the town hall. There wasn't anybody around and I went up onto the second floor and found the board room where the town board meets. It's a very nice room. And I came down and fetched Franklin and he went up. And so we sat down, Franklin read the Times and I worked on a few notes. And uh, the meeting was scheduled for 7 p.m., right? Well, first of all, they were late. They were late a half an hour. And there was a court stenographer there. Uh, and she had a stenographic machine. And slowly, one by one, people started to appear. In came the lawyer. His name is Tom Levin, or Lavin. No, 11. And uh, this paper was from the law firm. And this kind of upset me because I think it should be from the town. It should be the town that's speaking instead of a law firm. And uh, so we listened, first of all, to Jeff Clark's presentation for Cablevision, saying the uh, things that all the wonderful things Cablevision was giving the town of North Humstead. And uh, then we listened to the prolix lawyer, Tom Levin. And it took a long, 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 long time 
for him to say what he had to say. And of course, he's selling the franchise uh, to uh, the town board. Uh, the supervisor is a woman named uh, Newberger. And Connor, one of the board members, was advertised as that he would be late. He would be 10 minutes late, but he was more like 15 or 20. And uh, Doreen Banks, and then another gentleman to her left, and then another gentleman who was very interested in the schools. Uh, I think they should have provided, the, it's a public hearing, I think they should have provided to the public a copy of the franchise uh, so that the public uh, could have a chance to read it. Uh, it would have been good if they could have provided it in advance. Uh, there were uh, only about nine people not uh, in the pit and on the uh, bench. Uh, Robert Goldberg was there and Barbara Goldberg was there. A woman came in with uh, Tom, uh, rather with uh, Jeff uh, Clark, and nobody ever said who she was. Uh, the town clerk was there, but he calls the names too fast, and it seems like they make a, uh, a contest of how fast they can call the names. And uh, then there was a man sitting in the pit next to the town clerk uh, who was not identified. Oh, Durso was one of the people. Uh, and uh, the, that turned out to be the town attorney. So, uh, and this says uh, from this law firm, Meyer, Schwoozy, English, and Klein, Counselor at Law, 1505 Kelman Place, Mineola, New York. And it says to Honorable May Newberger, Town of North Hempstead, 220 Plandome Road, Manhasset, New York, re the North, Ham North Hempstead Cable TV, uh, our file number, and dear Supervisor Newberger, uh, I am pleased uh, to confirm to you that uh, discussions with Cablevision Systems Long Island Corporation on a new cable television franchise with the town of North Hempstead have been concluded, subject to approval by the town board and its authorization for you to execute the agreement. The final form of agreement has been transmitted to you by Cablevision under cover of letter from Jeffrey M. Clark dated July 20th, 2000. The following principal uh, features of the proposed agreement for consideration by you and the other town board members. It doesn't say anything about consideration by the public. my little buddy cat follows me around all day. Would it have anything to do with wanting something more to eat? Uh, one, the term of the agreement will be 10 years, commencing with the approval of the agreement by the New York State Public Service Commission. I think 10 years is too long. Uh, the, and so does Doreen uh, Banks. She thinks 10 years is too long. Uh, the uh, agreement permits Cablevision to maintain its present cable television system in the town's rights of way in the unincorporated areas of the town and require Cablevision to provide at least 77 channels of video programming at all times throughout the agreement. That's not many, 77 channels. The franchise agreement is non-exclusive so that the town is not precluded from granting other cable television franchises uh, should other providers be interested in such franchises. I would like to see that happen. 
It happened feebly in Greenberg, New York. It happened feebly in Manhattan. But I really would like to see that happen. Uh, this letter, by the way, was written August 14th. That's a month before the meeting. The agreement is applicable to cable television services provided throughout the town other than in the incorporated villages which have their own franchises. However, the agreement also provides for at least one joint governmental and educational channel to be under the general authority of the town. The channel will bring town government and school district programming simultaneously to every town resident, including residents of incorporated villages within the town, for up to nine hours per day. The nine hours to be allocated for this purpose are to be designated by the town. I would like to know what's going to be on the channel uh, the other 15 hours of the day. I would like to know what is that channel number. And when I brought that up, uh, nobody seemed to think that that was important. What was the number? And Jeff Clark seemed to think it was going to be 70 or 71. Well, that conflicts with public access. The channel will permit such school district to cable cast programming to all of the residents of the school district as well as all other residents of the town. In the event original cable programming on this channel meets a formula set forth in the agreement, the town will receive a second channel for these governmental and educational programming purposes, although the additional channel will not necessarily reach the residents in all incorporated villages. Well, a Riverhead uh, had in their franchise agreement uh, the option for a second public access channel and uh, the word from out east is that they got it. Now the town attorney was present. I asked if he was present, and he was, uh, but he never said a word. Never a word. Cablevision will provide one public access channel for programming produced by any interested residents of the town. Uh, what number is that program? What number channel is that? and how many hours? How many hours will be for residents of the town? In other words, a public uh, access channel. The agreement provides that Cablevision may not transfer control or ownership of the cable system to any other person or entity without the town's prior approval. Well, th I don't see that this is a great big deal because this is the law. The Cable Act of 1984 has always said that. In fact, there's very little Cablevision can do without the prior approval of the franchisor. This is all in Title 47 U.S. Code, Sections 521 et sequitur. The agreement provided for revocation of the franchise agreement in the event Cablevision defaults in any provision defined as a material provision. This generally applies to major defaults such as failure to construct or maintain the system with at least 77 channels or failure to make payments of required fees. Jeffrey Clark pointed out the, uh, this, that Cablevision, even though they didn't have a franchise in North Hempstead for the last uh, uh, either six years or four years, uh, they went ahead and built the uh, enlarged system anyway, the 77 channel system. The agreement provides that in the event of other
determined by the town after hearings in which Cablevision has an opportunity to be heard with respect to the uh, claims of violation. Cablevision will supply the town, each public library, each school district, and each private school accredited by the Board of Regents or State Department of Education with one receiver location without installation or monthly service charge for basic cable television service. Cablevision will make available portable equipment for production of cable television programming by residents of the town. Yet when Mr. Collins stepped forward and he says many of the activities of the schools are not in the studio, they are outside at locations outside, uh, in other words, remotes. And he asked were they going to have to depend upon Great Neck's remote truck or would they have one of their own? And Jeff Clark said, no, they would not have one of their own. Cablevision will locate and maintain a state-of-the-art television studio in the town. This will be accomplished within six months from the execution of the agreement. If Cablevision fails to complete uh, the studio within this period of time, the title to the portable equipment will be transferred to the town and Cablevision will pay fines in the amount of $10,000 per month to a maximum of $50,000. Uh, continued uh, failure to provide the studio will be grounds to revoke the franchise. Well, now the lawyer kept saying that this was state-of-the-art, state-of-the-art, state-of-the-art. But nobody thought to ask the lawyer, is it digital? Well, I did. And as to what the answer was, uh, I don't know. It got lost somewhere. Notwithstanding the foregoing, if Cablevision advises the town within six months that it intends to co locate its studio together with the studio required in the Great Neck North Shore Villages franchise agreements at a location acceptable to the town then Cablevision will have one year from that the date of execution of the franchise to establish that studio. In such event, the town will get title of the portable equipment to the portable equipment. If Cablevision fails to provide the studio after the expiration of that one year period, Cablevision will pay a penalty in the amount of $1,000 per day until the studio is completed. If the studio still is not completed within 15 months after execution of the agreement, the franchise may be revoked by the town. That's Don Quixote, okay? That's fighting windmills. The franchise fee will be 5% based on all gross receipts received by Cablevision from subscribers to the cable television system or from advertisers in the system or from home shopping channels on the system. Uh, that gross receipts has been defined, redefined, defined, and redefined. Does it include advertising? Uh, does it include premium channels? Uh, in the event it should be determined that Cablevision modem, modem service, Optimum Online, is a cable service as defined in the agreement, Cablevision also will pay a franchise fee of 5% based on gross receipts from subscribers to that service. In the event any audit discloses an underpayment of franchise fees by more than 5% of the amount owed, Cablevision will pay for the audit. Uh, this is all up in the air. It's in the courts. You know, uh, a town cannot get a franchise fee only on uh, on those things that, like telephone service. Uh, that doesn't include right of way. The town principally has to stick to right of the way uh, fees. You know, the uh, right to string wires from pole to pole on the town's right-of-ways. Cablevision will provide insurance coverage in amounts 
adequate to protect the town against any claims for liability arising out of Cablevision's activities pursuant to the franchise. I wanted to ask who is the insurance uh, company? Who is Cablevision's insurer? And where is the record of the insurer kept in the town? Uh, does the town have uh, the insurance agreement that Cablevision has made with an insurer? But uh, these public meetings are not public. I mean, the lawyer shouldn't have talked so long and the board should have given the public a chance. Cablevision will not charge subscribers in the town any higher fees for services than it charges to any other subscriber in Nassau County for similar services. Cablevision will provide the town with emergency alert communications over the cable system. Example, I would like to see an example of that. Cablevision in the town will meet periodically during the franchise term to review performance of the terms of the agreement. Well, how often and how soon, I would like to know. The agreement contains provisions that in the event the town should later gain authority to impose fees on other types of communication services, Cablevision would be required to pay such fees if the town also imposes such fees upon other providers similarly situated. However, it should be understood that for the present the, the agreement pertains only to cable television, the only cable communication service over which the town has regulatory authority. I look forward to a meeting with you and the other town board members on September 13, 2000 at 7.30 p.m. for the public hearing on this revised franchise agreement. I take exception to calling it a public hearing. The public really wasn't heard enough. And it's sincerely yours, A. Thomas Levin, L-E-V-I-N, and copy to Larry, or Laurie Dowd, Esquire, and who is that? And it is not signed. I did not, I was not given time enough to uh, point out all these defects that I'm uh, pointing out to you. I wanted to ask the town, do you, you actually, uh, Jeff Clark said the town would be able to inspect cable visions, books and records. What happened to me that very afternoon when I came to inspect the list of shareholders? It was denied. The person ran off. You know, fugitivism. I was denied that. Franklin was denied it the day before as my agent. And the law says I can send an agent. And I was denied making copies. And the law says clearly that I can make copies. And this is the 50th time that I've been denied my right to see the shareholder list, the books, and the records. So good luck to you, North Hampstead, trying to see cable visions, books, and records. Now that brings up another point that I made. It's too bad that the camera battery left. Uh, ran out, and it's too bad the audio tape ran out, and there is no uh, electronic record of it. But a point that I brought up was that uh, the town of North Hempstead has to show due diligence in inspecting Cablevision's record as far as keeping the law, and as far as judgments against them. They broke the law when they took the chat with Glendora off a of TV because they didn't like what it was on it. That breaks the law. 531E, Title 47, U.S. Code, the Cable Act of 1984. They broke the law that very afternoon, the New York State Business Corporation Law, which says a foreign corporation, which Cablevision is, cops out by incorporating in Delaware, where the law is a soft, and yet they make all their money in New York, or most of it. They're a parasite. Uh, and that very afternoon, they broke the New York State Foreign Corporation Law to show a shareholder the shareholders list and allow that shareholder to make copies of it. 
and the day before to allow the shareholder's agent to see the list and make copies. So the town of North Hampstead has to show due diligence in looking at Cablevision's law-breaking record. And Cablevision thereby is not fit to be the cable operator in the town of North Hampstead. They are not fit. And where is that law? That law is in Title 19, New York State Code, Rules and Regulations, and I think it's Section 597, 598, up along there, uh, franchising uh, law. Well, I wasn't able really to make that point thoroughly because I was rushed by Shirley Bruno, who does very peculiar things, uh, asking me to stop speaking so she could speak. And then finally, uh, Newberger let me, uh, Shirley interrupt me. And so that made a big, uh, <gasps> when I asked, what channel is this going to be? What is the number of this channel? this nine-hour channel that they have. And uh, so I think Jeff answers, uh, Jeff Clark's answer is not going to be uh, implemented. I don't see how it can be. And I said, will the town board meetings be uh, cable cast? Oh, well, that's up to us. Apparently they don't want the public to know what goes on at town board meetings. And um, Newberger mentioned that uh, something away uh, Cablevision might be fiscally uh, unable to to do this. In other words, they wouldn't have money to pay for this and this. And the lawyer kept talking about a level playing ground and come in for relief. And I said, I want you to know that James L. Dolan, the son of Charles F. Dolan, made $950,000 in basic salary plus $4 million in bonuses cost four million dollars other compensation. So Cablevision has plenty of money and where is the money going? You can see into whose pockets it's going. And uh, Newberger kept referring to uh, cable television as being deregulated. Well I pointed out to her and the board that the franchisor regulates uh, the uh, basic here, the basic cable rate. That's up to the franchisor. That's not up to the FCC. It's not up to the state. And I don't think that Cablevision is deregulated. Uh, there are many uh, regulations, triple regulation, uh, the uh, federal government, the state government, and the municipal government. I said, do you know about the seminars? <laughs> that are held by this commission. Yes. Well, did you go to the one in Smithtown? No. Did you go to the one in White Plains? Well, he did. And this was the councilman who was sitting at the public's uh, left, far left. Uh, because those seminars are, are tailor-made for municipal governments to consider uh, refranchising, renewing a franchise. And I said, this system-wide thing, uh, Newberger was concerned about school closing that she got so many calls from people and they never know whether the schools are going to be open or closed on a stormy day. Uh, and uh, so she said, well, we get some of it here and we get some of it here, but we don't have it for the whole town of North Hempstead. And I said, that term is called system-wide. You do not have it for system-wide. And I said, in Westchester, we have been fighting with Cablevision on system-wide uh, public access since 1996 when it was taken away from us. The towns 
had uh, three channels. Channel 14 for public access, channel 15 for government, and channel 16 for educational. And the cable operator said, uh, we're going to take, we want one of those channels back. And the town, the municipality says, oh no, no way. You're not going to get them back. And so the cable operator took away our system-wide public access. So for us to be seen in 20 municipalities in Westchester, and these are big municipalities, White Plains, Rye, Scarsdale, uh, Greenberg, Eastchester. These are big, big towns. And, uh, and for us to be seen, we'd have to make 20 dubs, and we'd have to take each week the dub to each of those 20 municipalities and go the next week and pick it up and bring in a new one, which makes, makes it impossible. And I said, Cablevision has done nothing about system-wide in Westchester all these years. So their hopes of having system-wide from Cablevision are very, very slim. Can you imagine that they were without a franchise uh, from 1994, I believe, and until present, they're still without a franchise. And that's because Cablevision is so greedy. They are not in the public interest, they are in private interest. And they go so far as to lie that they're a public company when all of the money goes to Dolan's. Every year there's new Dolan's, and the sh common Class B shareholder list is all Dolan's. And I asked, are any of you shareholders of Cablevision? They said no. I asked, how much did all of this litigation cost? What did it cost the town? What are you passing on to taxpayers to do all this negotiation with Cablevision? The lawyer said it cost $13,000. That's a very low figure. And I have a hard time believing it. I told them that my name was Glendora and that my program was a chat with Glendora and that I'd been on public access for 28 years and that I'm on 23 cable systems. And I thought Doreen Banks had the best questions of all. Uh, the other three, and, and the man about the school board and, and the kids and things like that, he seemed to be showing some uh, vigilance for the public. But I don't think the man on the far left was doing anything. I think it was all a done deal as far as he went. Uh, I am going to in object if I get time, and I've got to find time to do this. I am going to raise objections to the Public Service Commission, the very objections that I just ro uh, raised to you. And when is the vote? When are they going to vote on it? And when will the verdict, when will we know? I told them uh, that Cablevision had broken the law in Hot Pog for years and years and years and years. Uh, a cable TV system the size of Cablevision has to have a fully designated public access channel. And in Hot Pog, up until last week, it's been shared telecare. Last week, no more shared telecare. We have our own channel, Channel 71. But that's how long they broke the law with the hot bog system. And I said, how many hours on the public access channel? I said, now Cablevision has a public access channel from, oh, it starts at 6 p.m. They give the rest of the time to uh, country music. The lawyer mentioned that Cablevision was in the business of selling channels. I don't think so. Cablevision is in the business of collecting 450,000 checks a month from NASA. And then there's all the other ones. The Hot Box system, the Riverhead system, uh, the LTV system, the 
uh, East Hampton, Amagansett, and Montauk. And uh, what's the other system in Long Island? Plus all the, you know, the systems in Westchester. They are in the business of collecting 430,000 checks a month. That's their business. And you know where the money goes. I wanted to ask them if there was any intent to inspect the books and records. And I never got a chance. So to me, uh, we expended a great deal of time and a great deal of work uh, and the expense of going over there and being heard. And I don't think we were truly heard. Penny finally went, gave up, and went way up on top of the boxes to sleep. There are about nine legal papers to do today. They keep coming in, they keep backing up. This is Ginny's box. I don't think you can hardly see her. A chat with Glendora has taken about seven hours today. This is the satchel waiting to be filled and the uh, second, third, and fourth editions waiting to go into there, plus the specials. The box is eight, empty. Uh, the tapes have been labeled for next Tuesday, the 19th. Tapes are archives. Uh, those four tapes go back into the VHS box for Friday rotating tapes. And here's two specials that have to be sent to cable companies. And this is the Bronx edition. That's the video closet. Now we'll go out and show you the tapes that were labeled. It was such a pretty day, now it's overcast. It was just lovely. And this is the outdoor office. And that's the first edition and the second edition, and the third edition, and the fourth edition. This is the to-do list for today. Fifty-six jobs to do today. And that's the log. That's another form of to-do list. And you can't work without a wastebasket. You have to have a wastebasket right near you. And there's the great 1980 Lincoln. One thing must be done today. That car has to have fluids in it. Oil and STP and water and all the other fluids. Franklin took to 1993 to get the mirror fixed. This is the baseball bat that we got Franklin. He's a pretty good hitter. Yeah, he's doing all right. It's 3.59 p.m. I have fasted until 4 o'clock for what is this, the tenth day? Monday was the eighth, Tuesday was the ninth, Wednesday was the tenth, today is Thursday for eleven days. And it's good. This morning I down to 173 and I was 179 when I started. So now put away a chat with Glendora. Thank heaven. And we won't have to work on that again until Tuesday the nineteenth. First legal paper of the day. Uh, what case is it? Uh, Glendora versus Bruce Wasserstein, uh, the New York Law Journal, the publisher, the Long Island editor, and Julia C. Mead, the bad writer. And what court is it in? The United States District Court. Eastern District of Arkansas, Western Division. Case number 2000 for the year 2000, Civ, number 641. And the judge is JWC. Not any longer. Uh, order of transfer. It is hereby ordered the above styled case was heretofore 
assign to the docket of Magistrate, Magistrate Judge Caverno, pursuant to General Order 48, as directed in the order filed August the 28th, 2000. The case is now reassigned to United States District Judge George Howard and any referrals to Magistrate Judge H. David Young by chip exchange something, initials. What are those initials? Dated this fifth day of September 2000 at the direction of the court, James W. McCormack, clerk. Uh, Dina Jackson, is it? The deputy clerk? And CC to counsel, that would be Pro Se Glendora, Magistrate Judge Kavanaugh, a District Judge Howard, and courtroom deputies. And Glendora says, received 9-11-2000, memo endorsed uh, 9-14-2000, you are a good court. Excuse me, Thursday, September 14. 
Yes, and then pump it up to three quarter inch. Okay. Fine. So maybe in the future, if you give me a three quarter inch tape, no problem, problem. No problem. It'll, it'll just go away. I can just put the paperwork in, but I just I had to do this. Yeah, no problem. Pull up. Um, I I made copies of the the lawsuit that you gave me, and I appreciate that. That looks really good. I gave the Emory a copy and Frank. There's going to be another meeting soon with Robert and Stewart. I didn't give them their copies. I made copies of this thing. So whatever happens, happens. I I I agree. I I think we should sue the hell out out of all of them. Right. Um, Tribor Spiegel, who is the interim, who was. As of last Friday, became the new executive director. So he went from interim to new executive director. He went with Estella and Rosemary. Uh, I can't even say hello to anybody. It's like disgusting down there. It's horrible. Put it straight down. Oh, uh, thanks. I had a live show. The left post show was on okay. last week, but the phones weren't working right. We didn't even get a phone call. Uh, they were ringing, and then... Uh,